Welcome to month end to all my salespeople. We already know what time it is. It's crunch time. It is the end of the month. Now is the time of the month that literally separates the closers from the coasters. And you might think that closers is all about who ended up closing the most units or, or ending out closing the most units because closing and originating, at least in my industry in mortgage banking, are different, right? Like we can originate loans, but it doesn't necessarily mean that every single one is going to close. Does that make sense? So, so there's a saying in my industry and I learned it from one of my mentors. He said, locking is for, is for show, funding is for dough. And first time I heard about it, I was like, man, that's stupid. It's a riddle, <laughs> you know, but it, it literally is like, if you get down to it and you really understand the meaning of it in our industry, locking is more of like, um, of kind of it's, it's partial commitment. Right. And mortgage banking is, is, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a funny sport, man. Like you sell them once right up front just to get the social and then you sell them again to maybe get the commitment or the credit card number and then you got to sell them again once the, you know, the final closing disclosure comes out. But yo, that's three weeks later and then you got to sell them again to not rescind, right? <laughs> so it's this constant selling, it's this constant earning of, uh, uh, of trust and loyalty because Mind you, during this 30 to 45, some of you guys watching right now got long turn times. You guys got like 60 day turn times. Mm. And during that window of time or during that window of, of processing, our, our competitors are smelling blood in the water. How do they smell blood in the water is because they buy what's called trigger leads or credit pool trigger leads. And that basically means that once you pull the credit, uh, Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion, some of the bureaus, they will they will uh, sell notifications or um, uh, leads to mortgage lenders who are like us. This is all legal. This is all legit, right? And that's why you you sometimes get wind of your, of your prospects leaving you during the process. Like, hey man, I don't know what happened. I don't know if you sold my information. This is them telling you. I don't know if you sold my information, boo-boo, but I'm having 900 companies call me now. What did you do? Are you a broker? And what that means is basically these other companies just just purchase trigger data. And so anyway, my the point that I'm trying to get to you, get get through to you is that at month end, what we notice is the separation between the two. And and what you're gonna notice are are those who basically ease off the gas pedal. They forget and completely eliminate the rule of origination. And and then you have another uh, uh, side of, 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 you know, salesmen that is more focused on consistently originating because they're already done with the month. They understand that they got one more week to originate business for the following month. And again, that all comes down to your own turn times, your own internal turn times. So in other words, if your average turn time is like 45, 60 days, well then guess what? you you, you, your last week of the month is actually your last uh, opportunity to originate business for two months ahead. Does that make sense? Because whatever you start now is, is not going to close until another 45 or 60 days, right? And so it's not like, you know, what we sell in our industry, we get paid on the next week. It just doesn't work that way unless you got like super quick turn times. But anyway, the, the topic of this video and what I'm going to share with you is how to to stay consistent is how to ensure that whatever tier you have, whether it's at seven units, 10 units, or 15 units, you get to choose whichever tier you want, and then you can you can map out a way to consistently hit it. And you might be okay with the seventh tier, you or seven unit tier. You might be okay with the 10 unit tier, but then again, some of you, a very few of you, are gonna actually only accept the 15 or the 20 plus unit tier. And for you, boo-boo, I love that shit, man. Keep that hustle going. But if you haven't even hit a tier or if you don't know what a tier is, stick around. I'm going to hook you up with some information that's literally going to change your life. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. On this episode of Sales Remastered, I'm gonna dedicate to all the mortgage bankers, all, basically anyone in sales, right? Doesn't You don't even need to be a mortgage banker because the same rules apply regardless of whatever type of industry or product you sell. And my gift to you in this episode, or at least I should say my hope and my goal, is to help you avoid distraction. 
And what I'm talking about is this distraction typically happens at month end because we'll babysit the 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 sold units or will ease up because we perceive that we had a strong month that ever happened to you like you ever have like a strong run like a good consistent strong week of production and so you reward yourself by not going in as hard maybe you sleep in or maybe you don't you know what I mean like you treat yourself to leaving early like whatever it is that you 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 decide to do to treat yourself the only one who actually faces the consequence is your pocketbook because when it comes down to month end in my industry what I've noticed is that some loan officers become so reliant on what is in their pipeline and close to funding that month because they need to hit that tier like their whole focus their whole livelihood is dedicated and invested to make sure that number seven goes or make sure that number 10 funds or man if this if this 15 tier doesn't fund that's a five thousand or eight thousand dollars swing man i don't know if i'm gonna be able to face it and so what happens is they become stalkers they become damn near bugaboos to operations and so from the minute one they get in there like hey what's status on this what's status on this and they become like that that eager beaver prospect that you got i mean it's good they're good right like we love prospects who are eager beavers to close the loan and and get the process done because we know we got commitment but at the end of the day that eager beaver prospect like has this false perception that they're the only person in line does that, does that make sense it's kind of like them drivers that have no idea that anyone else is on the road like they'll fucking slow down in the fast lane like what are you doing boo boo get out the way and they they have no understanding that anyone else exists <laughs> you know how frustrating that is and so my goal is to help you avoid becoming that because understanding your position in 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 the in the office in your company in your division in your in your title right like because because basically every company has two sides you got sales and you got operations and they have to go together they just have to work smooth together and too many times I'm seeing too many salesmen treat operations in a way where they get pushed to the back of the line and it it baffles me how sometimes we forget that as salesmen the, pr the prospect and these leads and these clients are not the only thing we're selling, boo-boo. We're not only selling our manager that we're the best. We're not only selling our prospects to do business with us. We're not only selling ourselves that we could be better than we were the day before, but we're selling our operations to, to want to support us. And we forget about that, right? Like, like if you're married or you're in a relationship, is it not true that you are constantly selling that individual to stay with you some way, shape, or form? You're selling them to continue to be with you. Whether you act a specific way, whether you exchange loyalty, whether whatever it is you do, right? You care for them. Like there's, we call it love, right? But what we're doing is we're ultimately conveying that message of love and care to keep that person close to us and want to do the very things that we need them to do. And so the same thing applies with operations. Much like how you sell your manager to not get on you or, or ride you for numbers, we have to do the same and, and psychologically when we become uh, kind of, I wanna say selfish, right? Because that's ultimately what it comes down to at the at month end, we get so hyper-focused on making sure that whatever's in the pipeline funds out it, it goes out and so we become so hyper focused that we don't care about anyone else we don't care about our other prospects we don't care about our future uh, pipeline we don't care about our lead generation because what happens is we just solely care about the loans that are close to funding because we have either spent the money already or we just need to say hey man I, I got this tier so we want to brag we're we're more focused about our future winnings while that's good and while that is going to make you stronger what you need to understand is that what are we sacrificing in place up are we sacrificing our our image are we sacrificing the the brand name that we have like we we are a brand right meaning I mean, like look at it this way like in, in sales there might be that one processor where you recognize the name and you see your loan get get assigned to that processor and you're like oh fuck <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying like you see that name like damn 
It's because that name, that processor, let's just say John Smith, right? J your loan has been assigned to John Smith. You're like, Ugh. and what happens is, is because you feel that reaction because they, they that person, it, their name, think of it as a brand, right? Like they, they give you this feeling, they give you this emotion. And so then you think about the past and be like, oh man, every, man, I remember the last loan I had with this dude or this chick. Man, it was a nightmare, Ugh. right? Like you just, you kind of, you know what I mean? Like you kind of react in a certain way where, where it just eats at you. And so we have the same effect on operations. And so what we tend to do is when it comes down to month end, we don't care about anything else but ourselves and our, and our fundings, right? Or, or our month end. And we are, we are okay to burn our image and our brand with operations. Mind you, that operation is going to continue to help you. At some point, you're going to work with John Smith again. At some point, you're going to do this again. So it's always best to protect yourself by positioning yourself. Now, how do you do this? You might be like, yo, D, man, get to the point. How do I do this? I thought we were talking about month end, bro. And I am. And so what I'm talking about is the reason why we go hyper-focused in these units is because we don't give ourselves enough padding. And so if you want to hit 7 to 10 to 15, it's not about isolating your focus to, to make sure every single unit closes at month end. It's about actually doing the opposite. It's about trusting the operations, trusting the support, trusting uh, the, the, the key roles that are delegated these responsibilities to take the baton from you and close out for the rest of the month. It's understanding that just like you, your operations and your processors have a quota to hit, they have tiers to hit, they have an incentive to hit. And so if you knew that John Smith got your file, you could take simple precautions that does not involve you getting upset it does not involve you venting or kicking the wall or complaining nonstop. No one cares about your two cents of how he did two loans ago. Everyone's got their own struggle. But if I saw John Smith's uh, uh, name get assigned, instead of hitting him up with frustration, like all cap letters, bold, nine, question marks, eight, like an exclamation point instead of hitting him that way because I know that's just gonna push John Smith away and become more worse than he already is I'm going to be a little bit more more strategic I'm gonna talk to him like 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 you know what I mean like I'm trying to earn uh, a date right I'm, I'm not talking about like that but you get what I'm saying like you, you there's a way that you want to attract somebody and so think about it like when you want to make a good impression with somebody you act a certain way right like you you're it, like salesmen do it all the time brand new salesmen do it all the time and they do it in the most extra type of way hey how are you it's a great day like like that i'm not saying you need to do that to john smith but what i'm saying is always keep your impression smooth right like make them like you because if they like you and they and you are the only one who's actually nice to them well guess what that loyalty is going to earn you enough attention that you need at month end where you don't need to babysit become stalkerish and worry you don't need to wake up you know what i mean like stay up all night wake up extra early rushing to work and babysit your pipeline because what happens happens is when you shut off from the entire world you're shutting off from origination and when you shut off from origination whether it's seven days eight days ten days before month end you got to remember you're gonna feel that slump and so then you're playing catch-up and that just Oh, that just digs a hole for you because what happens is you notice that your pipeline went down when all them bitches fund out you notice that oh man my pipeline man i only got like two loans in my pipeline. what the hell was i doing bro and so what happens is you know you 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 get become in this panic you become in this rush especially if you just had like a tier bonus right that you just made and now your income go is going to dip because now you notice that because you took a week or a week and a half off your productions drop and then what happens is it gets even worse this is what happens you become in this panic state to where you start chasing leads you start begging uh, prospects to give you business and when I say begging I don't mean like you're on your knees like this I'm talking about begging like you become bugaboos to them you become stalkerish to them so that stalkerish mode transferred from operations to now your prospects and now you're chasing wood because what happens is the only reason why you're even interested to talk with them or people are interested to talk with you is because you're just focused on replenishing and you become so 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 focused on replenishing that you begin to panic and then what happens is you begin to chase the qualified leads that don't want to talk to you because you 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 you're 
know what I mean? Like you're just desperate. You're just extra. The only leads that want to talk to you are those that don't qualify. But because you are so blinded with this uh, desperation, right? Like you got the tint of desperation in your eyes. You talk to these leads and once they give you some sort of interest and engagement, we think, oh yes, I get to replenish. So then you give that lead some time and you become, you kind of put these blinders on and these blinders, it, it, what happens is it, it is it muffles your hearing and so what happens when they tell you like oh yeah i i i uh, i've been trying to refinance for 5 months and no one will help me you you begin you muffle it out and so instead of thinking clearly and saying well how come no one's helping you instead of thinking about it is like is it probably because you don't qualify you instead think with that desperation tint in front of your eyes like oh man hell yeah this must be fate oh man i'm going to be i'm going to help you i'm going to help you those other five companies don't listen to me i'm going to help you and then what happens is you originate right these people are locking they're giving you steps super fast you're like how you get oh, man i got these steps super quick you thinking you superman and shit you be like oh yeah yeah i'm gonna go in and then you got like this false confidence and shit but what happens is the reason why they had it on point is because it's been piled up for the last five months that they've been trying to refinance that they've been trying to apply for a loan that they continuously get get been getting denied why because they got some ninety thousand dollar hero loan that they forgot to tell you about or they got uh, they you know what I mean they they have some sort of judgment that is not settled yet they got something on title some cloud on title that they need to get around or they're in the midst of divorce and they didn't tell you right so there's there, there's always that underlying reason but we sometimes miss that because that desperation tint that blinds us or kind of mutes our hearing we can't make wise decisions or wise choices because we're desperate to make up for the month that we, or the week that we lost out of the last month and so in order to avoid our income from dropping in order to avoid our pipeline to to be completely empty and in order to get our manager off our back because we just went through a week of no origination we're like in this panic mode panic 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 anyone want to talk to me you know what i mean like you it's uh, it, i don't know I, I i mean when you get to this point my goal is that you 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 keep in mind that when it gets to month end, let everyone else slow down. Be the one that's different and don't slow down. If you if you pay attention to why it is you feel like you need to be stalkerish at, at month end, you need to you need to really plan ahead and again position yourself because because if it if it's all about making sure that they're buttoned up, make sure they're buttoned up every day right like but do it at the right time and make sure you're aware of how your brand which is your name appears to operations when operations see your name do they grunt you know what i mean do they do they grind their teeth and say i can't fucking stand that person or do they say oh man i love this loan officer Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do whatever I need to do for this loan officer. Which one do you want to be? Well, if you want to be the latter, if you want to be the one that they want to work with, I invite you to check out salesremaster.com. This is the last week in that the, the uh, banker's closure guide is going to be on that sale. It's the back to school special and you can get it right now, 50% off. Check out salesremaster.com. It's going to take you to my product page. And if you've never been there before, or if you don't have the free sales script, you know, go to that salesremaster.com site, scroll all the way to the bottom, and request a copy of the sales script. It's it's going to help you. That in itself is going to earn you a couple extra sales. Use that script to go get those sales to afford the university. Because even though that the banker closer guide is is on special, what what you really want to get, and if you're in a position to really invest in yourself, I mean, the greatest investment that you could ever 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 make is an invest is investing into yourself and it doesn't necessarily mean a college university it doesn't necessarily mean a degree it doesn't necessarily mean that you go back to school it just means that you invest in yourself it could be a book a, a seminar a mastermind a boot camp a, you know what I mean a gym membership or in this case if you're you know what I mean if you're in sales you're gonna want to get the formula to six figures man it's just this grand package that teaches you all about how to persuade operations operations, persuade prospects, market, lead, originate, sell, close. It even gives you a, a bonus course that gives you all the tips on how to fast track yourself to management. So you want to earn more income? Do you want to earn a rip over the production of your team? Get this course, man. It's far cheaper than college. 
but check it out for yourself, salesremaster.com. I'm giving preview links of the content within the course, so check it out and let me know what you think. And more importantly, my question of the day is, what is your takeaway from this video? Comment below, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and share this video link to someone who needs to see it so that both of you guys can climb together. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Show you everything I know. A jungle slide.